Hi guys, I'm Redneck Computer Geek and here's my son Johnny and today we're going to be working on a major upgrade on his H2 power wheel. Now with these H2s they're they're pretty much known for blowing out gearboxes and the gearbox set is anywhere from 35 to 60 dollars depending on what retailer you can find and so I figured at that point by the time I hit 60 dollars it's time for an upgrade. So Let's walk around and talk about today's upgrade. All right, so we got our H2 here, Hummer, and one side the gear is blown out, the motor still turns, so we know that the electrical system is still working, it's just that the gearbox is done. And they're known for that. So what we've decided to do is take this to a whole new level. We've got these extract tires, and they're on eight inch rims, they're actual pneumatic tires and they have a one inch area here and we have this it's a mobility scooter rear end except for the problem is it has a three quarter inch shaft but the nice thing is it's got a keyway on one side and it has this mounting thread on the end and if you get these from surpluscenter.com both of these are from there they actually include the nylon lock nut here so what we're going to do is on the end of this, we're going to create an insert that causes a three quarter inch keyway using nothing more than just generic two inch, three quarter inch pipe that you buy at a hardware store. Now the pipe is seamed on one side on the inside. So we're going to use that as the side that we cut out later. Now, along with this, You've got these ends, which are rubber mount, and they come with mounting brackets, which makes it nice and easy. The other problem we run into is that the mobility scooter has a proprietary plug on the end. What we're going to do is we're going to remove that plug, and we're going to take a trailer plug that you buy at your regular auto parts store, now this is an extension, it's a 12 inch extension kit, which means basically I just slice it in half and I got one side and the other side that I can put on. Now we've got fuses here, a whole entire set we're going to put in line with the motor and here's a fuse box that we're going to mount in underneath the seat. And we got these bottles. And these connectors the crimp on connectors and that's because we're going to be switching over to these sealed cell batteries I've been running power wheels on these for years I'm actually on about my fifth year of running power wheels on these and the real reality is they explode due to overcharging they don't explode due to use and the last one of these that I had in the Silverado ran for three summers on it perfectly fine I use a really, really slow trickle charger and charge them over next to the garage during the night when the kids are asleep, and they're fine. But we want to weight reduce, so we're going down to this this time, which means we need to go and make connectors for it. All right, let off. All right, as you can see from John's demonstration there, the motor turns, but nobody's home. So what we've done is we've soldered this into here put shrink wrap on it and we're going to take this and clip it off so the clip on that side is going towards what we've deemed our positive so we're going to clip that to the positive side of the motor we're going to take our black here and we're going to clip that to the black side of this motor making sure not to hit the case side of the, the motor and so we're going to take this black mini clip that I put on and we're going to put it on the inside and now when John hits the pedal we should see this turn Good. so that turned in the forward direction which is what we needed John do it one more time 
Yep, good. And that one. All right, so we confirm that if we take our white lead and wire it to the red lead on the right gearbox, the brown lead, and we wire it to the black lead on the brown gearbox. So what we ended up discovering here was that the red lead going to the motor needs to be to the red lead coming through the harness. But in order to actually have neutral and in order to actually have forward and reverse, you have to actually have the white lead and the black lead from this side together on your grounding side of the motor. So from here, we now, okay, John, set it in forward. This one? Yes. Yep, set it in forward and go. So there's forward, first gear. No, first. Doesn't yep. And reverse. Okay, good. So there we go. So in wiring this up, this black wire does not get used. If you do connect it, you end up with magical white smoke. I just learned the hard way. Don't do it yourself. So I figured I'd work you through my train of thought here. Basically what I have here is these triangles are where the center of the original axle is. I want to try and line up to the wheel well and not cut out any more than I have to. So to keep the geometry of the vehicle, I've marked where the original axles were on each side. What I've also done is I've taken and created this box that sits over the top. What I did was I measured out the fact that the box itself was 14, so I cut this at 14 and a half to give me a little sway on either side. I've got three holes that are drilled down through, which will let me put self-tapping screws in and mount it afterwards. And then also what I'm going to do is once this is mounted, I'm going to weld on tabs on the other side so I can mount to the other side of the box. Once this is done, once I have this cut out, I'll be able to set the transmission down in and line up the center of the transmission with the arrows here on either side and that'll give me where to peg my holes to be able to bolt the transmission in. I have noticed on this side, on the other side over here, that the transmission mount plate is actually circular on the inside, and so I might have to brazen out a bit here. But we'll deal with that when we get there. This reciprocating saw has a wood cutting blade on it. We'll see how this works. The last time I used it, I was cutting up a goat for slaughter. Now one of the key things to note here is that I made sure I took all my measurements before I cut the plastic because once you start cutting the plastic, I figured out during building my gas-powered power wheel that this thing would distort big time. So, as I was expecting on the far end over here, it has a more rounded side to it. As you can see, this one's flat. This one's rounded and it actually comes down in, so I'm gonna have to take a cutter and slice out a chunk there so it settles all the way, because as you can see, it's up. Well, the width of my finger. All right, so basically I've already drawn a line on where the inside weld groove is. And that's going to be in the way, so that's where you want to cut. And here are our keys. This is a standard size key for like a lawn tractor or something like that if you need to buy one. If you go to any car quest or something like that, they should be able to sell you key stock. But what we're going to do is we're going to mark this off and we're going to cut it not just a little bit, but a lot bit extra 
on what it needs. And the reason being for this is that the exterior width of this three quarter inch pipe is actually bigger than what needs to fit inside that one inch extract tire rim. So we're going to cut it out a little bit extra on each side from where it is that the three quarter inch shaft goes through. That way when we press it and we put it into the extract rim it fits. There we go that's got plenty of looseness to it. We're gonna quench it in some water in order to shrink it up a bit. See what we can do once we get it in the rim. Alright so here we are we got this and we've got our lead hammer. If you have never had one of these, you really should look it up on my channel how to make one. They're amazingly useful. Pound that in so it's almost flush because we're going to weld the outside edge and then grind it. Basically, I wired the battery backwards, so it had two reverses and one forward. Now that I've fixed the battery problem, it has two forwards and one reverse. Works a hell of a lot better. Do another Ewing and come back across the gravel. So as you can see, I never would have been able to do that before. The rear tires are working good. I actually have some smaller extracts I'm thinking about putting on the front. And we'll go from there. Oh, and runtime is basically about 20 to 30 minutes depending on whether he's in second or first. Rocket. Drive up through and rock it back and forth. There you go, you're making it, you're making it, you're making it. There we go, so we definitely need 24 volts. But we'll figure that out later.